Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for giving us your word, for teaching us, for helping us to know you, to know your grace and your love and your mercy. We thank you every day that you have given us this beautiful word that is left and your spirit that we can be strengthened. Lord, give us your spirit today for understanding of your word, to receive it in our hearts and our minds, for our eyes to be open, our ears to hear clearly. Thank you, Lord. Lily of the valley, let your sweet aroma fill my life. Rose of share and show me how to grow in beauty in God's sight. Fairest of ten thousand, make me a reflection of your light. Day star shine down on me. Let your love shine through me in the night. Lead me, Lord, I'll follow anywhere you open up the door. Let your words speak to me. Show me what I've never seen before. Lord, I'll be your witness, because you can take what's wrong and make it right. Day star shine down on me. Let your love shine through me in the night. Lord, I see a world that's dying, wounded by the master of deceit. Growing in the darkness, haunted by the years of lack of peace. But when I see you standing near me, Lord, shining with compassion in your eyes, I pray, Jesus, shine down on me. Let your love shine through me in the night. Oh, lead me, Lord, I'll follow anywhere you open up the door. Let your words speak to me. Show me what I've never seen before. Lord, I'll be your witness. You can take what's wrong and make it right. Day star shine down on me. Let your love shine through me in the night. Oh, Jesus, shine down on me. Let your love shine through me in the night. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy to us. Thank you, Jesus. All right, we are going to go through Genesis 42 and 43. And if you remember, as we finished 41, that Joseph was put as uh, governor over all of what was Pharaoh's. He had made a plan to prepare for the famine that was coming through the dream that Pharaoh had received from God and Joseph interpreted that there would be seven years of abundance, more than they could even count, an innumerable amount of abundance but that it would be important that someone would record of all of it and store up safely throughout those seven years so that it would then be preserved and used for the following seven years where there would be severe 
uh, severe famine in all of the land, all over the world, there would be severe famine. So as we go into 42, when Jacob saw that there was grain in Egypt, and Jacob said to his sons, why do you look at one another? He said, indeed, I've heard there's grain in Egypt. So go down to that place and buy it for us there that we may live and not die. So you can imagine in this time, this had been uh, multiple years, you know, that Jacob had not seen his son, Joseph, no thanking, believing that he was dead. And he had been with his sons all of this time. The ones that were left with him, there were 11 of them. And Joseph on the other side was living in Egypt through what he went through. So Jacob was wealthy, if you all remember. So he had the wherewithal to buy the grain, but they knew that it was only going to be available in Egypt because of the Lord of Egypt that was under Pharaoh was going to make provision that could be purchased. So he sent the 10 brothers of Joseph. He didn't send Benjamin because as you know, Benjamin was probably now considered his uh, favorite son because Rachel only bore Joseph and Benjamin. Leah and the two maids bore the rest of the sons. But Jacob was closer with Rachel. She's the one that he truly loved. And so therefore, those two sons, Joseph and Benjamin, would have been his favorites. Benjamin kept at home by Jacob. So Joseph's 10 brothers went down to buy grain in Egypt. Jacob did not send Benjamin with his brothers. He said, what if some calamity befalls him and the sons of Israel went to buy grain among those who journeyed for the famine was in the land of Canaan. So Jacob believed that if he sent Benjamin, that that would possibly be the loss of his two sons by Rachel completely. Now, Joseph was governor over the land and it was he who sold to all the people of the land. Joseph's brothers came and bowed down before him with their faces to the earth. Joseph saw his brothers and recognized them, but he acted as a stranger to them and spoke roughly to them. So they didn't recognize Joseph. As a matter of fact, they had heard of the name that he had been called and the, the name that was given of the Lord. And so there was no reason for them to believe that Joseph was this same person. And Joseph also uh kept them from knowing that it was him. He he probably, you know, they usually had a lot of makeup on in those days. The men did. And then, of course, he was older. He was 17 the last time the brothers saw him. So he would have been um, in his 30s somewhere. He was made governor at the age of 30. So somewhere in that possible, um, a little bit over 40, because there was the seven years of, of plenty and then seven years of famine. So he's pretty close to that 40 year mark. He said to them, where do you come from? He was very rough with them. And they said from the land of Canaan to buy food. So Joseph recognized his brothers, but they didn't recognize him. Then Joseph remembered the dreams which he had dreamed about them and said to them, you are spies. You have come to see the nakedness of the land. And they said to him, no, my Lord, but your servants have come to buy food. We are all one man's son. We are honest men. Your servants are not spies. But he said to them, no, but you have come to see the nakedness of the land. And they said, your servants are 12 brothers, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And in fact, the youngest is with our father today and one is no more. But Joseph said to them, it is as I spoke to you, saying you are spies. In this manner, you shall be tested by the life of Pharaoh. You shall not leave this place unless your youngest brother comes here. Send one of you, let him bring your brother, and you shall be kept in prison that your words may be tested to see whether there is any truth in you. Or else, by the life of Pharaoh, surely you are spies. So he put them all together in prison three days. 
Then Joseph said to them the third day, do this and live, for I fear God. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers be confined to your prison house, but you go and carry grain for the famine of your houses and bring your youngest brother to me, so your words will be verified and you shall not die. And they did so. Then they said to one another, we are truly guilty concerning our brother, for we saw the anguish of his soul when he pleaded with us and we would not hear. Therefore, this distress has come upon us. So they believed that they were being punished for what they had originally done to Joseph. Reuben answered them saying, did I not speak to you saying, do not sin against the boy and you would not listen. Therefore, behold, his blood is now required of us. But they did not know that Joseph understood them, for he spoke to them through an interpreter. And he turned himself away from them and wept. Then he returned to them again and talked with them. And he took Simeon from them and bowed him before their eyes. Joseph was greatly moved in first seeing his brothers that he hadn't seen in so long. The thought of the possibility of seeing his dad and his younger brother all of those things were very moving in his heart. Then Joseph gave a command to fill their sacks with grain to restore every man's money to his sack and to give them provisions for the journey. Thus he did for them. So they loaded their donkeys with grain and departed from there. But as one of them opened a sack to give donkey feed at the encampment, he saw his money. And there it was in the mouth of his sack. So he said to his brothers, my money has been restored and there it is in my sack. Then their hearts failed them and they were so afraid, saying to one another, what is this that God has done to us? Then they went to Jacob, their father in the land of Canaan and told him all that had happened to them, saying, the man who is Lord of the land spoke roughly to us and took us for spies of the country. But we said to him, we are honest men. We are not spies. We are 12 brothers, sons of our father. One is no more, and the youngest is with our father this day in the land of Canaan. Then the man, the Lord of the country, said to us, By this I will know you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers here with me, and take food for the famine of your households, and be gone. And bring your youngest brother to me, so I shall know that you are not spies but that you are honest men. I will grant your brother to you and you may trade in the land. Then it happened as they emptied their sacks that surprisingly each man's bundle of money was in his sack. And when they and when they and their father saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. And Jacob, their father said to them, you have bereaved me. Joseph is no more. Simeon is no more. And you want to take Benjamin? All these things are against me. Then Reuben spoke to his brother, his father saying, kill my two sons if I do not bring him back to you. Put him in my hands and I will bring him back to you. But he said, my son shall not go down with you for his brother is dead and he is left alone. If any calamity should befall him along the way in which you go, then you would bring down my gray hair with sorrow to the grave. Now the famine was severe in the land, and it came to pass, when they had eaten up the grain which they had brought from Egypt, that their father said to them, Go back, buy us a little food. But Judah spoke to him, saying, The man solemnly warned us, saying, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. If you send our brother with us, we will go down and buy you food. But if you will not send him, we will not go down. For the man said to us, you shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. Israel said, why did you deal so wrongfully with me as to tell the man whether you still had another brother? But they said, the man asked us pointedly about ourselves and our family, saying, is your father still alive? Have you another brother? We told him according to these words. Could we possibly have known that he would say, bring your brother down? Then Judah said to Israel, his father, send the lad with me and we will arise and go that we may live and not die. Both we and you and also our little ones. I myself will be surety for him. From my hand, you shall require him. If I do not bring him back to you and set him before you, 
then let me bear the blame forever. For if we have not lingered, surely by now we would have returned this second time. Their father Israel said to them, If it must be so, then do this. Take some of the best fruits of the land in your vessels, carry down a present for the man, and a little balm and a little honey, spices and myrrh, pistachio nuts and almonds. Take double money in your hand and take back in your hand the money that was returned in the mouth of your sacks. Perhaps it was an oversight. Take your brother also and arise, go back to the man, and may God Almighty give you mercy before the man, that he may release your other brother and Benjamin. If I am bereaved, I am bereaved. So the men took that present and Benjamin. They took double the money in their hand and arose and went down to Egypt. And they stood before Joseph. When Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the steward of his house, Take these men to my house and slaughter an animal and make it ready, for these men will dine with me at noon. Then the man did as Joseph ordered, and the man brought the men into Joseph's house. Now the men were very afraid because they were brought into Joseph's house, and they said, It's because of the money that was returned in our sacks the first time that we are brought in so that he may make a case against us and seize us to take us as slaves with our donkeys. When they drew near to the steward of Joseph's Joseph's house, they talked with him at the door of the house and said, Oh, sir, we indeed came down the first time to buy food. But it happened when we came to the encampment that we opened our sacks and there Each man's money was in the mouth of his sack, our money in full weight. So we have brought it back in our hand and we have brought down other money in our hands to buy food. We do not know who put money in our sacks, but he said, peace be with you. Do not be afraid. Your God and the God of your father has given you treasure in your sacks. I had your money. Then he brought Simeon out to them. So the man brought the men into Joseph's house and gave them water and they washed their feet and he gave their donkeys feed. Then they made the present ready for Joseph's coming at noon, for they heard that they would eat bread there. When Joseph came home, they brought him the present, which was in their hand into the house and bowed down before him to the earth. Then he asked them about their well-being and he said, is your father well? The old man of whom you spoke, is he still alive? And they answered, Your servant, our father, is in good health. He is still alive. And they bowed their heads down and prostrated themselves. Then he lifted his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your younger brother of whom you spoke to me? And he said, God be gracious to you and my To you, my son, now his heart yearned for his brother. So Joseph made haste and sought somewhere to weep. He was so moved by seeing his brothers. He went into his chamber and wept there. Then he washed his face. He came out and he restrained himself and said, serve the bread. So they set him a place by himself. And them by themselves and the Egyptians who ate with him by themselves, because the Egyptians could not eat food with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination to the Egyptians. And they set before him the firstborn according to his birthright and the youngest according to his youth. And the men looked in astonishment at one another. Then he took servings to them from before, but Benjamin's serving was five times as much as any of theirs. So they drank and were merry with him. What a wonderful time for Joseph to see his brothers and the longing he must have had in his heart for his dad. Even through all of the uh, favor that he had received from Pharaoh, all of the authority that he had been given, all of the wealth that he had, Nothing compared to the desire to be with his family and to be able to see their lives be well and to know that his dad was alive and he did not see him yet. 
I know that his heart had to have been so overwhelmed with that. But we can look at these brothers and realize that this is a time that they are being tested. They are, their integrity is being tested by Joseph, by what he told them when he sent them away to get Benjamin and what he, what he has done with them in his house and how they've come to repay the monies, to bring the gifts, to show a right heart and knowing all the time that they felt that they were being punished by God and that something terrible was going to happen, but they still stood strong and did what was right in the eyes of God. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. Amen.